So Ableton Live has a really cool way to create basically an infinite variety of drum loops, percussion loops, stuff like that with a pretty easy workflow idea. And you can do this with basically anything, but here I have something like a bongo loop. Now you think of loops like this bongos, percussion, hi-hats, tops, all these different things. You can just right click on this loop and go down to slice to new MIDI track. And basically what I do is I slice by transient. It might be on default on something like 16th note or something like that, but I just slice it by the transient. So you have all these little sounds in those bongo and percussion loops, that kind of thing. And you hit okay. It's just gonna take up to 99 of them and break it all out into basically a drum rack. It doesn't even take that long. It just happened while we're talking here and you can see everything right there. It's all spilled out into one long MIDI line. So if I actually played it from this MIDI clip now, it's just gonna run through the sample. It'll, the loop will sound the same, but everything is just all cut out. You can see it running through all the slices. It's a pretty amazing idea that Ableton, Ableton can do that. And when you have everything broken out into MIDI like this, it's really easy to recombine things and just create a totally different idea. So what I'm gonna do is just click on one of these things, hit Control A or Command A on Mac, that's select all. And basically I've got everything selected. When you go over to transform, this is where you can do really interesting stuff with the MIDI that you have selected. And they give you a number of options. If you go to this drop down menu where it says recombine, you can see a bunch of different things. But I like to spend a lot of time on recombine because when you hit this and then you go to transform, it'll basically just randomly spill everything out. It kind of looks like chaos, but there's a really easy way to handle this. Uh, if we play through this, a lot of times, depending on the loop, it will spit out some pretty interesting ideas like right off the bat. Now you can see in the top right corner, it says one eighth. So that's eighth notes that we're looking at by default on your MIDI grid. But remember, we broke this out into transients. So we have lots of little bits and pieces all in there. So I might hit control one or command one and that's going to change my MIDI grid to 16th notes. Then I hit Control A for select all, Control U, and this is command by the way if you're on Mac, and Control U will quantize it. So it'll slightly slot things into the grid, creates a little more normalization in the sound. And you can kind of just listen through And you can find a section that might appeal to you. Like a lot of times I think in terms of measures, we're basically looking at, you know, seven, eight measures in front of us right now. I actually like the first measure. So what I might do is I could take my loop region, which is this colored bar here and drag it into there. So it's just going to loop from that spot. And you'll notice that this loop region is independent from the loop region that is in the arrangement side of the screen. So these are independent bars. So as I run through everything, it'll look like it's playing the whole thing, but what it's actually doing is just playing the section that I've highlighted here. That's a cool like trick with these windows that a lot of people don't realize. So I could do that. Or another neat trick is I could take this whole section of the MIDI. Maybe I'm gonna have it highlighted here still and I'll hit control C for copy. I'll bring this back out to where it was. And when I click on this side here, I can hit paste. Now, of course it's already in the first measure, but then if I hit control D, it's going to place that rhythm that I liked and superimpose it onto all the other measures that have their own little variations that were produced there. And now you'll notice when you play these rhythms, sort of glued together by the syncopation that you originally liked in that one measure. So there's little variations going on. It always varies by how it kind of turns out, but by pasting that through the measures, you, you get these variations, but it's still kind of glued together, which is a really, really fun way 
to work on these things. You can arguably like further glue these things together by adding something like a shaker or some other kind of consistent 16th note oriented percussion. And that's another way to glue it all together, but look at the comparison of where we started. We originally just had this loop, which had a totally different syncopation to it. And now we have something that we produced in basically seconds. And uh, it's really easy to do. And also I just think one of the most amazing things about Ableton as a DAW is that the tools they give you provide you so many more possibilities. And for any of you that have followed me for a while, you know I love to recombine things and try different things. Here I'm in the modulator section where I'm gonna grab an LFO and I can just drag this over here and have it control some of these parameters that are given to us by default uh, with this device. And with an LFO, it's really cool. You can control different things with an LFO. It's very easy to use too, if you've never tried it. I can just hit map and basically click on like whatever on this side of the tool and uh, let's say pitch. And this might create kind of a goofy sound obviously, but it's pretty cool sounding though. Um, and uh, then you have these different waveforms that happen with the LFO. So we can go with something like let's say, let's go down. And one of the tricks that I like to do with down or up or saw is to turn the smooth all the way up. Sometimes it just gives you a more musical effect. Let's see how this sounds. It's pretty cool. It kind of adds more resonance to the sound that we've created so far. And uh, of course, the sky is the limit. You could just hit... If you want to tag it to more things, you hit this little button right here and you can map it a bunch more to really like anything you can think of. Even if you don't really know what you're doing with an LFO, you can come up with some really cool results. Another one is sample length. And this is a cool one that a lot of tricks happen with the Ableton drum rack and just sampling in general with sample length. It's a really unique thing because if you think about it, you can kind of chop up something even further by messing with the timing of what you're sampling. So if I go to map here and I click on sample length, it's gonna start pulling that thing back. It might not make a huge difference right now. I don't know, let's check it. So it's changing it a little bit, but these parameters over here will go a bit further. So let's say I hit the plus button, I'm gonna pull it all the way back and you'll notice that now that thing is moving a lot more further back. Um, let's see what that does. This tends to create some interesting syncopation. And you can literally see it happening in the yellow highlight where the sample lengths are all being manipulated. They're getting very short when it pulls back like this. And what this tends to do is it creates that kind of spitty sound, these kind of like, almost like ghost notes that are coming from this. So already we're in a really cool place with this sound. And what's another really neat trick is that basically anything that you highlight in Ableton, any module could be an instrument or an effect, whatever's highlighted, if you hit control G or command G on Mac, it's going to slot it into a chain where you can stack it with other things. So in this case, because this is an instrument, it's in a instrument rack. If it was an effect, it'd be in the audio effect rack. And this is really cool because I can just highlight this chain, hit control D, and it's going to duplicate it. <clears throat> now this new iteration of the drum rack, it takes seconds, even though it's 99 samples, uh, this new iteration of the drum rack is not tagged at all to the LFO. So nothing's moving anymore. But why I might do this is because the snapshots that they give you over here are really, really useful. Things like swell can have a reverse type effect. Percussive is really good for an attack. So if I hit the play button, these macros will adjust. And if I solo this, you can hear it. It tends to add more pop and attack to the sound. So this is a great way to add some punch, some pop to the original sound that we have still going on right here.
So you'll notice without it, it kind of has all that cool modulation going on, but it's lost some of the punch. So we add it back in. Bring back in that other loop to kind of tie it together. So yeah, the sky's really the limit when it comes to the amount of things that you can do with this stuff. And I just want to make a video to get people started. Really cool things you can do. Remember, you can right click any loop you got, go to slice to new MIDI track. I tend to slice it by transient. And then the sky's the limit when it comes to these MIDI effects, but really useful one is going to be recombine. And you just hit transform with whatever you got going on and you can immediately get all kinds of different effects. So I hope you found this video useful. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all later. Have fun making music.